welcome to Manage Your Money, the show where we help you plan and channel your finances to reach your life goals. We have our expert financial planner Gaurav Mashwala joining us in the studio and today we're joined by two young ladies who have uh, recently started their businesses. We've got Shikha Jain and Smita Singh also with us uh, in the studios. Uh, Gaurav, uh, you know, uh, this is an episode, uh, it's going to be the last of our uh, series here. And we just want to refresh, you know, uh, what is it that one needs to do when it comes to financial planning? How should they proceed and make sure that their plan works for them? Uh, yeah, so first of all, thank you so much NDTV and NSC for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to do the show, about six of them, and I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, just kind of recapping on the, the entire process, the first and foremost that we always encourage people is to look at their own financial goals because that's their internal situation. People are creating, saving, investing, working hard to reach those destinations, those responsibilities and dreams. So make that thing first. And after you have done that, two other things that you should prepare for is your family budget and your list of assets and liabilities. Now, those things are to be done first, but that's after that you start approaching and uh, this is the kind of pyramid which you have on screen is what we uh, as planners and more so in uh, my firm, we, we take it this way. We look at three aspects of wealth. One is protecting the wealth, accumulating the wealth and, the, and distributing the wealth. So in the first part is protecting ourselves, so protecting individual and family from income loss, uh, from uh, illnesses, expense related to illnesses in case there is death, disability, accident. So that's where wealth protection comes in, the first part, the contingency fund where we cannot have a formal insurance, hence create contingency and next is insurance will come in. Once that's taken care of, then we move to the second stage which is accumulating wealth and accumulating wealth from the perspective of achieving our financial goals, So, which is our responsibilities and dreams and that will come from the financial goal sheet that uh, an individual or a couple or a family would have made. Now there, there could be two uh, approaches. One is for our responsibilities, sometimes in life we may have to borrow money and these are, should be borrowed only for responsibilities like, you know, purchase house, education, if there are critical illnesses, etc. So look at your, your liabilities, if you already borrowed, should you prepay, if you have to borrow, where do you borrow, you go to your employer, you, you go to your relatives and friends, go to financial institutions. After that, look at investments and investing in either debt, equity, gold, real estate, use mutual fund as a vehicle, do it directly. And we have spoken about all these things uh, and that's where investment comes in. So investment comes little later when it comes to financial planning. Once that happens, then we come to retirement. Now retirement also the first part is accumulating wealth and India being uh, a country with younger population, invariably we only talk about accumulating wealth, the accumulation. So most products available are wealth accumulation for retirement and that's where investment strategies will come in. Look at that. The last part is wealth distribution where again the first, uh, the second aspect of retirement, that's you have retired now and you need to distribute your own wealth to your own self. Now you need to look at that as to how much amount of contingency, what amount of money for regular income and since we live longer, how many, uh, how, how much copper should be set aside so that it grows at a rate higher than inflation. Look at that and lastly estate planning and here estate planning what I actually mean is looking at will, nomination, how your assets will go on to next generation, your near and dear ones and all these needs to be looked into. Uh, and in the same three steps that has been given, when you kind of miss a step and you are in for difficulty, you don't protect your wealth, start accumulating untoward and sit, you are in problem. You look at protection and distribution, there is no wealth, there is a problem. If you don't distribute, there is a problem. So look at all three aspects. So that of course is the foundation for uh, financial planning for uh, life ahead. Now I spent a day with Shikha, which turned out to be a gastronomical delight. Take a look. Twenty-six-year-old Shikha Jain has been fond of cooking since she was 11. An arts graduate, Shikha tried her hand at modelling before going on to compete a course in hotel management. About a year ago, she took up the challenge to make baking cakes her profession. 
somewhere around two, three years uh, back, when I was going through a really bad time, a little low phase of my life, I thought, let's take it a chance. Let me start baking. I still wasn't too sure, but I wanted to do it. You know, it just uh, helped me to polish and refine and get better and better and better. Egged on by family encouragement, Shikha completed a course in baking and spent hours on YouTube seeing videos on cake decoration tips. She also invested in specialized books and equipment to make her venture a success. Since she's still trying to make a name for herself in a creative and fairly unorganized sector, her focus now is to be able to scale up, blowing back most of her income into her venture. We are just putting all into, you know, I mean expansion only. I mean into the business, into, into you know, helping to improve ourselves, to involve, to be. We have to keep ensuring that uh, our uh, ingredients are stabilized. We have all the, you know, equipments. We have everything on place. Currently, most of the orders that Shikha receives is through word of mouth advertising and an online presence on Facebook. Eventually, Shikha would like to have her own chain of patisseries in Delhi. So Shikha, you've certainly set a very ambitious target for yourself. Uh, but uh, other than your business, are you looking at uh, doing something, uh, securing your own financial uh, future? See, uh, I'm still new and I've just started my business. So I've spoken to Gaurav. He'll be discussing about my plan. Uh, yeah, Shikha, but so we just spoke about it and for the first time I looked at your your pastries and bakery items and that was more tempting as well. So, you know, had I spoken on phone I, when we spoke, I would have probably requested you to send me a box. But anyway, I missed that opportunity. A uh, few points, yes, I've gone through your finances. There are a couple of things that you should keep in mind. Obviously, what you want to do always in life is keep expanding and you are at a stage where you want to expand and you want to keep pumping your money in into the business, which is perfectly fine. But there are a few things that you should keep in mind. One is maintain a small amount of you know, uh, contingency fund, which is just 25,000 in your case. And you need not worry about keeping large amounts because you're living with the family. So uh, any venturity and family will be there. Uh, second comes health insurance and ensure there is health insurance and whatever health cover that your family has, ensure you are aware of it. The third aspect is life insurance and you don't need that. So these are certain basic steps that I tell you, not so much. So we move away and come to your financial goals straight away. The one thing that you have stated is your sister's marriage. I'm taking that up first and your business because that's also one standard goal. From the large amount of money that you have, which is lying in bank fixed deposit, just earmark amount of corpus that you need for funding sister's marriage or supporting the family or just giving her a gift, put it in an FD and that's it. So that's where the entire thing ends as far as your like to personal here. requirements are concerned. Uh, yeah. yeah, you have a question there? Yeah, I have a question. I would just like to mention that uh, for my sister's marriage, I won't be, uh, you know, investing through my savings. I would like to invest it through my current income. I would like to, you know, earn and whatever I earn after it will take a few years. And, I, and then I would like to uh, invest that money for her, you know, on her sister's marriage as a gift. Uh, is there a particular reason? Is it more of a thought process? Because what will happen is while you can do that the money in bank fd is also created by you from your earnings uh, is what i assume so uh, is there any particular emotional thing saying that whatever is in my fd yeah. Yeah, is what i will not touch because we are talking about large amount of money lying in fd which is losing to inflation so on one end you're losing to inflation on second uh, the money that you're going to be earning in future which can be deployed for business because your business requirements are anyway being taken care of, you don't want to look at it. So any particular reason why you don't want to use your existing FD on which you're also paying taxes on the interest that's earned? See, uh, that is more of my security money. It's, it's, it's for my future because these days business has its own risks. You can't take a risk by, you know, in investing your own saving money. And it's also emotionally that I would like to, you know, invest my own hard-earned money. I mean, uh, because the FD money is my family money that was given to me. 
So what I okay. want to do is I want I to earn my own money, my own current income, and then after a few years, when that day happens, when my sister's marriage happens, then I would like to uh, put that money okay. for her marriage as a gift. Shikha, po Shikha point taken. Uh, it's more of an emotional aspect. While as a planner, I would encourage you to look at one single balance sheet, whether it's your own money or family. But if it's emotionally not comfortable, I respect that decision. What you may want to do is. Uh, from your regular income, which is going to be coming and start a recurring deposit. We well, are doing exactly the same thing which I am telling you, but you are fine emotionally, take that call because if that is going to give you happiness, just do that. Start a recurring deposit from your income. Now, if your income is little uncertain, then you will have to create certain amount of uh, you know, regularity in that recurring deposit because you can't have both. Uh, you can't say I'll not touch my FD and I'll not start a regular recurring deposit. So do that from your income, start a recurring deposit, create a corpus to fund your sister's marriage and from the money which is there, that's what you need to keep aside for your business expansion. Now, I would encourage you to look at three different baskets for your funds requirement, a two to three years. So money that's needed within two to three years for business requirement, money which is needed in three to five years and money which is needed beyond that. Now, based on the uh, funds requirement in each of these basket, basket, there could be different strategies. So, anything in two to three years, it could be a debt-based mutual fund or a separate recurring deposit apart from a recurring deposit for your sister's marriage, which is three to five years. It could be a mutual fund scheme, which is about 25-30% into equity and rest into a debt-based instrument. And whatever beyond five to seven years, it could be an equity-based fund. So, create these three baskets earmark them for your business expansion. Now, your business expansion needs can be, can, may just happen a little earlier or later and based on that, you'll have to keep maneuvering amongst these baskets. It won't be static and hence keep reviewing your requirement on month-on-month -month basis and on quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. I have a question, Gaurav. Uh, yep. Is uh, equity mutual funds risk-free and are there any other alternatives for it? As in, if I don't want an equity mutual funds, can I invest in something else? Uh, you don't have much of a choice, Shikha, because then you lose to inflation. So, I do understand your anxiety about equity markets going up and down and you gaining money, you losing money and what will happen if equity markets stumble and then you have lost all the hard earned uh, uh, income that you have created. At the same time, if you lose to inflation, you have a problem. So, I would encourage that start with an equity investment, equity based SIP, equity mutual fund SIP. All thing is one or two years prior to actual requirements, start shifting that money back into a debt based instrument or redeem and put into FD. But you really don't have an option. I could have suggested gold based mutual funds, but again that would have ups and downs. So, you really don't have an option. Uh, if you're saying I just want to keep putting an FD, then the amount of money that you'll have to earn will be pretty much large. Pay tax, lose to inflation. Now, if you're going to be earning so much, then rather deploy that. I mean, why work hard and pay tax and lose to inflation just because you have fear? Uh, you are getting into a venture which is on your own. Uh, you can't be getting scared of risk. You have to start learning to live with the risk because you have chosen an occupation of being on your own.